Big E Langston defends the Intercontinental Championship against Damian Sandow. So Sandow goes from being the future uncrowned world heavyweight champion to just getting an IC title shot and coming up short too. But he, it needed to happen because this is a, a very new title reign for Big E and having him drop the title this fast, that would have looked really bad for him. So as much as I'm a fan of Damian Sandow, he needed to lose this match. And because he lost this match and it doesn't, necessarily look like they're going to go with a huge feud between these two i'm thinking that whole plan that i had of damian sandow winning the title not going to happen he's going to win the title far down the line from now if ever and biggie if he drops it to anybody right now it's looking like he's probably going to drop it to mark henry if anybody uh by wrestlemania so in terms of the match itself Pretty standard. I thought that this was just filler. It was nothing more than a match that you would see on Raw, which is really disappointing because I like both these guys and I really wanted this to be entertaining. Peyton, your thoughts? I think you're highly underestimating this situation. I think it's still very possible that we are going to see another matchup between Damian Sandow and Biggie Langston. And in the process of this matchup, Mark Henry is going to decide that he's a little jealous that someone on the tag team is carrying gold and it's not him leading to that title changing hands and leading to a matchup still between Big E Langston and Mark Henry at WrestleMania. So maybe you could still get both things you want. Maybe. I'll go with that. I'll be optimistic now. Just blind fan optimism. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just as far as the match, though, I it was short. It was fine. It didn't offend me. Um, the only thing that would offend me is, like you're saying, if this is all for Damian Sandow and we never see anything from him again with this, I I can't have anything complaints when they went out there. They had a clean, short match, and that was it. It was just a filler match. This was a one-match show, so the fact that we got anything else enjoyable on it, I I think it's good. Jester, did you think that this was kind of a throwaway, or were you a fan of it? Um, When I heard that it was Big E and Sandow, I assumed that because Big E just got the title, they needed a semi-credible heel to put him over. Obviously, he's not going to lose the title anytime soon. So, yeah, I, I didn't feel like the match had any importance going in. I mean, two good guys, two, you know, talented guys. Match blue, way too short, nothing interesting happened. Um, and now, as we saw on Monday, Big E's moving on to a tag team with Henry. I Nothing impressive happened on the pay-per-view, which is sad because I feel like when, a people, when people order pay-per-views, they want to see the big guys and they want to see how, you know, talented they are. And you get this, you know, is it Big E's first title defense? I don't know. I, I, I haven't been watching enough. Was it? I'm not sure. Uh, I think he defended it against Curtis Axel. Okay. Well, first title defense against a new person. And, uh, first title defense the person that, that The person that he didn't, be, they didn't beat for the title already. And, you know, it was just a, it was a throwaway. Nothing really big happened. Yeah, he, he beat him. But, I mean, nothing impressive happened. The tag match on Monday, he looked a lot better. Really impressed with the, with the tag match on Monday. Could see something there with him and Henry down the line. More than likely not, I think Biggie holds the title for a while. I think one of the uh, ramifications of unifying the two world titles is the two mid-card titles get a huge bump in importance. So I feel like the Intercontinental Champion is going to have a long reign, and whoever takes the U.S. title off of Dean Ambrose is going to have a long reign, which is why I think Roman Reigns is going to take it off of him. I could see big long reigns for Reigns and Big E, honestly. I think that uh, when you unify the two world titles, you put a lot of effort into... You you have to put a lot more effort into the lower card titles because you need to... First of all, you're losing one main event every pay-per-view. And then secondly, because you you just lose the guarantee of having two world title matches that sell themselves. And then on top of that, you have uh, just a need for a second tier championship. And the Intercontinental title is probably going to be the second most important championship in WWE now after the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. So I think Big E is going to have a long reign because he's the first Intercontinental champion under the reign of the unified world title. So he's got to be he's got to look strong and he's definitely someone they think is really credible and they, they, they think has a bright future. So I don't see Big E dropping in at WrestleMania or, or anytime soon. Not even at WrestleMania. No, no, he's going to hold it for a while. Hmm. Who do you think he is going to drop it to? It's too far away to say, but I think he'll hold it till. Let's see. What, when did he win the title? What month? Uh, uh, I like could see a, I could see a, a I could see a five month long title reign for Big E, Honestly. 
So, so that would yeah, have him lose it at WrestleMania. Maybe WrestleMania, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I would say Extreme Rules. I think he could hold it through WrestleMania so That's, he still gets the big feel-good moment and then losing it at Extreme Rules. Extreme Rules is perfectly fine. Absolutely, yeah. I, I could see Extreme Rules. Yeah, that seems to make a lot of sense. Especially if he ends up having a match with somebody like Mark Henry because if you have an Extreme Rules match and you know, you're know you a big guy and you introduce weapons and stuff into it, that's a good way to lose. So They're both big guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I mean, Mark Henry can pull a truck. Imagine if he picks up a truck and hits him with it. <laughs> <laughs> Graham, what did you think about uh, Big E and Damien? Is this the right track that they're going, or is this a little wayward path that they shouldn't have gone down? It was a decent match for what it was. I mean, the feud itself was kind of well built on both Raw and SmackDown, but no one really cared about it. Sandow has fallen far since he was Mr. Money in the Bank. I mean, after he won the briefcase, it just was kind of all downhill from there, which is a shame because the guy has potential. Um, I think it was the right move for Langston to go over, but basically it was a match that you would see on Raw. The feud uh, is apparently over now since Sandow is now the bad Cena, apparently, um, come next week's Raw, so that's pretty stupid. But um, as far as Langston as IC champion goes, like what was said before me, I agree with the fact that Langston should be holding the championship for quite a while. I mean, if Axel could get a five-month reign as IC champion, I don't see why Langston can't. So, um, but I am looking forward to Henry versus Langston at WrestleMania. It has the potential to be a very good matchup with Henry putting over Langston. I don't see Mark Henry winning the IC Championship. Um, just putting over Langston, that's what his role should be in WWE at being at the age that he is. But um, it should be a good matchup, and I'm glad to see that WWE is slowly building towards their Mania matches this far in advance. Now, if I could just play devil's advocate on one more thing once again, I don't think just because Damian Santa is being put into the Santa role necessarily means that this is over. Because once again, yes, he's playing bad Santa, but look who's playing good Santa, the current tag team partner of Big E Langston. Good so point. I don't think this is done. Yeah, you know, that is a good point. That's a way that they can just have another tag team match down the line, and then it just leads to another uh, Langston and Sandow match. And I could see that being on the card for the Royal Rumble. Mm-hmm. Now, I can't see them having a feud beyond the Royal Rumble. Um, no, I mean, it's going to end there, whether it changes hands or it stays with Big E. I, I can't see them carrying that all the way to Mania. Yeah, I, I definitely think they just picked Henry and Sandow out of a hat to have a good and a bad Sandow for Christmas next week. I don't think there's any long-term ramifications out of it. I, I, I think they're too short-sighted to make that much thought into the storyline, honestly. <laughs> if they did Basically. that, imagine what would have happened if they would have gotten like some of the really terrible people, like uh, Bad Santa played by JTG and Good Santa played by <laughs> Yoshitatsu or something like. They they have to pick semi relevant people. <laughs> Sandow actually makes a really good Bad Santa, but Henry just seems like fucking just just drew his name out of a hat. Like, <laughs> or or they're like, well, we gotta we gotta make a black oh. Santa and a white Santa to not a, not offend people. So. No, it's because Big Henry's big, fat, and jolly, and he's got an uh, infectious oh. smile. He's a perfect good Santa. Yeah. And remember when he used to come out in those big, giant Kool Aid Man red outfits? He looked like Santa. <laughs> at least, at least Mick Foley isn't the good Santa. It's yeah, true. I thought that that would have been the easiest thing that they would have done. Didn't they but, do this last year, like Foley and Del Rio or something? Or did Del Rio just like try yeah. to run over Foley with his car? I don't no, remember. No, well, yeah. Del Rio did hit Santa. Okay, that good. That's good. probably what they're going to do again this year. They're going to start building towards Del Rio and Mark Henry feud. He's going to run out and hit him with the car. Come yeah, on. I don't think he should be driving with that concussion. <laughs> I don't oh, think he should a, be on Raw. He has a concussion. Mm-hmm. So sad. Sean, what do you think about Biggie and Damien? No, I thought this match was just a, a typical Raw match, to be honest. And there's there's one thing that I don't like is the white strap on the Intercontinental Championship. It just it just looks odd on a black guy. I'm not not being racist or nothing. <laughs> that, it, just look, exactly it just looks odd. Racist. It just looks odd. That's a definition of being racist. I don't want no white on no blacks, is what Sean just said. <laughs> it, it just looks odd. And, and the only good thing about this match was Damien Sandow's t-shirt. Oh, that new t-shirt is awesome. <laughs> See, I like the uh, the white strap. I think that that makes it a little bit distinguishable. I mean, I hated the, the yellow one. That was gross. It looks better on some people yellow. than it doesn't. I mean, it looked great on Cody Rhodes. It looked good with The Miz. I agree. It doesn't look as fitting for Biggie. You know what I think would look good with him? And I'm not just saying this to be racist, but uh, I remember when Ahmed Johnson won the Intercontinental title, that very same styled one, he got that uh, that light brown strap on it. It looked really good for him. I think he could pull that off, too. Well, I mean, he looks a lot like Ahmed Johnson. So. He does look a lot like Ahmed Johnson, yes. I don't mm-hmm. think he looks like Ahmed. He looks more like Ahmed than like he does gold dust. 
or something. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if Big E comes out dressed up in the gold dust thing with the wig and all that, oh my god, I'm turning the channel immediately. <laughs> Never watching wrestling again. I think if you're looking for people who look more like Ahmed, you got to go with like Bobby Ezekiel. Lashley or Bobby Lashley. Or, no, Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Oh, yeah, Ezekiel. There you she's go. still employed. Uh, as far as I understand, he's down in the NXT program, but I don't think he's even on like the television tapings because I haven't seen him. I have seen Mason Ryan, but he only does like minute and a half matches. He still hasn't gotten any better. That's all he should be doing. <laughs> he should be doing zero minute matches. <laughs> I go stick he up comes out, the match is already over voice. with. He just comes into the <laughs> ring and just lays down, and they count to three. Yay! Those are three-second matches, silly. Yeah, that's a little bit too much. He just comes out, and it's already still playing his music to leave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, poor, uh, poor Mason Ryan. So pointless. The Welsh Batista. Yeah, the Welsh Batista. Who's... Well, now we know what's wrong with him. <laughs> first, off, first off he's welsh and second of off he's batista he's lower on the uh the favorite welshman scale than sean while we're while we're on topics that are racist and awful he's the we don't like the welsh batista <laughs> all right next match we're going to talk about the tag team championship fatal four-way elimination match 